quickly, then I will take your questions and I can help you answer about any data questions that you have. Okay, deal? Cool. So uh, I'm doing slideshow, right? So guys, uh, as you know, data is the new oil which powers everything that we do. And I am Ashad Ahmed and I'm going to talk you through about this data, right? The journey that data has and how we can accomplish our uh, goals, our missions, our how we can build our career uh, in the data science field. So about me, uh, I am a founder of the Decoding Data Science. Uh, it's an education and consulting company. I have around 17 years experience in data science and I have worked in companies like Accenture, HP, Dell, Majid Al Futem, and I have helped 300 mentees get their dream job with actual practical experience that is required to crack interviews. So today we are going to talk about data, right? What are what is data all about? What are the different career journeys and uh, how to make a decision of what type of job we want to do and how to help build your uh, entry into your first job. Right and a little bit of recap and some assignments, some assessments that are there at end of this call. So the takeaways of this call and what you need to do from this call. OK, so now about data, right? So uh, quickly, uh, why uh, there is so much buzz about data science as of now? The statistical someone had mentioned that uh, the statistics comes into the picture when you think about data, but statistics, data science and AI, they were there before uh, as well, right? From 1970s, 60s, there was all these techniques used. But lately what has happened that too much hype is there because first of all, the cost of uh, processing and storing the data has reduced sharply from 1980s before as you remember in 80s the size of the computers were like a whole building right whole room supercomputers that were the size of a whole room and slowly they the technology improved and the size of the computer and the chips really decreased uh, okay so that is why uh, OK, everything is fine. So that is why everything uh, is now available cheaply. Companies are able to process the data and process uh, it quickly and cheaply. So that is there, there is a lot of growth in the data consumption and there are a lot of devices that are generating a lot of data, right? And uh, the next slide talks about the explosion of data that is right now. Most of us are online, right? In one minute of the day that you are spending online, you can see enormous amounts of data in, are getting generated across social properties that are here like Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Where are these data getting stored? How we can use this data to understand customers, right? And not only transactional level data is available, right? You can see there are a lot of human interactions, social in, interactions, IoT, machine generated data that is available so that and it is increasing the volumes are right now it is going above zetra bytes that is 10 to the power 20s and uh, how we can make use of this data companies are really rethinking their strategies so that they can use this data for the growth now coming to now there is a lot of data you understand right in the uh, market now how we can use this data uh, let me just, uh, there are some people in the, I don't, I have to make this uh, automated next time, no problem. So there is descriptive analytics, right? This is the first step for any analytics that is there. Diagnostic is there, predictive is there and prescriptive. So if there, descriptive is the first step for any company, they have to understand what type of data that they have so that they can do some uh, what what is the situation right now so if you understand the question what's happening so that is the first step and you have to be good in that so i'm telling you these things because this is important for your roles that you decide you need to do diagnostic is why is it happening right you need to have the ability 
to drill down to the root cause, like why this problem is happening. And what is the uh, how we can isolate the problem and tell exactly why the sales has dipped in this particular uh, base. So these are the things that you need to ask. You need to do a lot of data analysis. And as someone mentioned, statistics comes into the picture here as well. Now, after doing diagnostic, after understanding why, then predictive is the third layer, right? We have to understand what's likely to happen. Like we know the historical data. We need to understand that data and predict what is going to happen next. OK, and then we have prescriptive, right? Prescriptive is an advanced stage, advanced analytics technique. This is like a simulation model. Like suppose you have a uh, marketing mix model. How much dollars you have to spend in which channel to give you the maximum uh, sales? Uh, this helps in companies using data analytics in the next step to make actions immediately, which is the campaign that they need to do, which is the most effective which is the uh, in AB testing, which is the uh, test and control we need to use so that we get maximum return. So these are the things that are there in prescriptive and uh, these are the four main types of analytics that are majorly used and you can see there is something called as a value on the Y axis and complexity on the right axis. So descriptive is the basic and as you go to the different types, the complexity also increases and the value for the business also increases. OK, uh, now understanding about how are companies using the data. So till now, you, does anyone have any question regarding the different types of data analytics? They can put it in the chat so that I can uh, get back, get to you uh, regarding the different uh, types of data analytics that are there. Thank you. So uh, now for the next uh, slide, if we don't have any more questions. Omkar, uh, Azhar, I think Il Il Ilsa has joined, right? Your name is Ilsa, right? OK, so I know you joined late, but the, the recording will be available for this webinar, so you can have a look. Uh, we just started some time back. Uh, great. So now. Uh, how are companies using data, right? Uh, you know, there is a lot of data around. So these are the main six. Uh, there are a lot more, to be honest, uh, guys. There are a lot more areas, but uh, I have focused on these six uh, areas, right? One is the product design and development. Uh, this is very important. Any products that you see, right? It may be apps or it may be uh, any website. So they go through a product design phase. And in that particular phase, analytics is used a lot. To understand which is the better uh, prototype. A lot of market assessments happen. A lot of uh, in the product development stage, a lot of data is created. Not only uh, primary data, but a lot of secondary data research is also being done. There are surveys to be conducted, doing some data analysis, seeing what will work, what will not work. So this is one of the most important things that it is being used. Planning and procuring is also being used. This is uh, for before we do any. For any company, for any industry, they need to do a lot of planning and procuring. And the, in this, there is a lot of uh, things that happen. The sales forecast happens whenever any company has to do any production, right? Uh, and they need to get materials. So before doing and getting the materials, they need to do a lot of planning and they need to make sure that they procure all the raw materials and forecast the correct sales because you know, right? We need to forecast the optimal capacity so that there is no loss in uh, and there is no storage issues. As you know, many things get out of date out of uh, very soon, right? So to optimize and the base stage and to make sure that the company is running at the optimal capacity. This is a very important space. This is these are the planning and uh, phase, right? The second thing comes when they're actually doing the manufacturing distribution. So the lot of supply chain issue comes into the picture to make sure that the items receive in time and it goes out to the 
distributors in time. The transportation uh, routes are uh, optimal. The production is done in a proper way. There is no wastage that is there. And to make sure the operation of the company is going on very well, analytics is used a lot because a lot of data is getting created and a lot of analysis is being done to make sure everything is working properly. The fourth one is the revenue growth, right? Every company is working to increase their revenue, right? So a lot of pricing analytics, promotion optimization to make sure that they're doing proper promotions, to measure their whatever they're doing in a proper way, to make sure the categories that are doing good, they should be given more uh, privilege than the other ones. After that, sales and marketing. This is the sales and marketing and consumer insights in the last few years have gained lot of importance. Why? Because lot of online data is getting generated. In the previous slide that I showed you, right? So much online data is getting generated. So, and uh, there is a survey that uh, most of uh, the uh, new generation and uh, are spending more than 50% uh, of their wake hours, wake hours, on online, so a lot of their behaviors are getting captured online, right? And uh, because of this, what is happening? The companies are able to understand their customers very well, and they're able to do sales and marketing in a very uh, proper manner. Uh, so that is one thing. Uh, one more person has joined in. Okay, cool. So welcome, uh, David. So. Uh, so then we have a lot of brand analytics, market optimization, media planning, e-commerce, and all these things uh, are really very important. And consumer insights, as I told you, how to understand the customers. There is a lot of loyalty programs, a lot of survey analytics that happens to understand how the company can keep their consumers engaged. So one part of a business is to get the customer, right? That is sales and marketing. But once the customer comes into the platform, how to keep that particular customer engaged? So a lot of data analytics is being used there. So now in this particular slide, in these types of uh, companies that they use data, do you have any guys, any have any questions? In this particular thing, if you have, let me know. I will move to the next slide that is about the career journey. So, okay, so uh, there are no nothing coming as of now. So in the career journey, right? I uh, working for 17 years in this field and understanding this uh, uh, data science career, I have a particular view about this. Uh, it uh, may be different from other uh, companies and institutes, but this is according to what I believe. There are the major three major data science career options that are available as of now. One is the data engineering piece. People who are responsible to, to, to get the data from various sources uh, to the database. That is one very important part. As you see, have seen earlier, right? There are so many data sources that are coming up in the, uh, there is so much social media property that is there. So much data is being generated from IOTs. So how to get that data to the database? So that is one important thing that is very, that is there, right? So data engineering is the first one. The second is data analyst. So now I have mentioned descriptive and diagnostic, right? So descriptive and diagnostic are the ones that the data analysts are more responsible to do. So these are basically uh, the journey, right? It is not only a position. This is a career path that you need to select. One is the data engineering. The data analyst that talks about descriptive and diagnostic analytics. And then we have data scientists that are doing predictive and prescriptive analytics. The advanced analytics that I mentioned, how uh, which are more complex in nature and they have more value uh, to the business. So they are the data scientists, which is the senior position, which you need to know uh, more things than the other two. But this is the main career options that you can think about according to your educational background, according to your strengths, which one you can start focusing on and start building your profile. So I will talk about everything one on one. Uh, 
but these are the main career paths that uh, we have uh, in for these three only. So you may start if you are a junior role, if you have less than five years of experience, you can start as a data engineer or a database administrator and then go on to be a late data engineer and a senior data architect. Uh, this is one career path that you do. Second, as I told you, the data analyst, business analyst, you may join in a junior role. And then you can become a lead business analyst or an analytics manager handling a team. So in the senior positions, you will be handling teams of junior data engineers, junior data analysts and junior data scientists as well when you're in the senior position. And the last one is the data science domain wherein you are being, going to start as a statistician or an ML engineer and then become a lead data scientist and a data science manager uh, handling whole end-to-end -end projects. So this is a career path. Many students and many uh, people say that can we shift from one uh, category to another? Surely you can do that, but you need to master one. So data, when you are a data analyst and you are uh, you really want to get into a data lead data scientist, then you need to show your capability as a statistician or a machine learning engineer, and you, sh you uh, should show that you are very good in these things. You have done good projects that show your skill sets in the statistics and machine learning part, and you can surely shift. So this is not, uh, you can have, uh, from one category, you can easily go to the second category or third category. It depends upon your, how willing you are. But if you are working in one particular category and you show strong skills, you can become a specialist. And nowadays in the market, a specialist is more important than a generalist. So if you are a good data engineer, you will be valued more than an average data science manager. So that is what is the real thing. So you need to be a, you need to specialize in these three things and you need to focus. So that is what I'm seeing the trend is going on. Generalization does not work now. You need to specialize in one thing and you need to be good in that. So now coming to a decision, right? So I will talk about the things that are required in all these three particular options. So for data engineer, right? You need to have a basic domain expertise. You need to be uh, have a strong working knowledge of the tools and the platforms that are there. When I say basic, because you need to understand the type of data that is coming in, right? So uh, till I here, before I go into the uh, different career options and uh, things that are there, uh, do you have any questions? So uh, uh, Muhammad, uh, Sayyid Muhammad has asked a question. If a data analyst can do all this, what is the use of all what is the use of all MBAs and BBAs? If a data analyst can do all this, what is the so? Uh, Sayed, so I don't know of MBA and BBA what they do. I am more talking about the role of a uh, data, right? So even your MBAs and BBAs, they will be using some data to do some analysis, right? To be honest, uh, MBAs and BBAs, whatever you're mentioning in any company, they still do descriptive analytics. OK, and uh, MBAs and uh, this is question is uh, uh, if I am understanding correctly. Data analysts are the people who are using the data to do some. Uh, analysis and a data person, whenever he does an analysis, he talks about facts that is coming out from the data, but an MBA or a BBA, they will talk about opinions. They will talk about the strategy. They will talk about the trends, they will not have any data or statistics to back up their answers. So that is what is one thing that uh, there is a difference. Any other questions you guys have? Uh, before I move, move to the specific things about uh, the da different data engineering and uh, data analysts. Uh, Azhar, Ilsa, Hiba, Omkar. We have one more person, right? Uh, I don't know the name. Uh, his name was Sajid. Yeah, Sajid. Any questions you have? Yeah, go ahead. You can type in your questions, uh, Sayed. If no one is having any question, I can uh, take your question as well. Yeah. 
machine learning engineer is the third part it is uh, a something to do with the stat uh, it is an advanced uh, something to do with the data science right machine learning engineer is he is a one who is responsible to do machine learning algorithms who to build uh, machine learning algorithms with the data that is available so they are only specific they have lot of statistical knowledge and they are directly doing uh, model modeling and all those things and building uh, uh productionized models so that this is the thing that they do and these are basically computer science engineers or uh, masters in analytics who directly can start in this particular journey cool uh so no it is a part of data science everything that i am talking about uh, sayed is a part of data science so this, this is just a different uh you can say uh title if i can be uh, accurate is a title like machine learning engineers uh, you, uh, you will not expect a machine learning engineer to go to uh, to do data engineering stuff to do uh, basic data analysis stuff they will be directly very much focused on building models and product, put doing using ml ops over those models okay cool uh, so yeah, they will take our questions uh, more later on uh, so now about data engineering uh, there are different things that you need to be good at domain domain is very important because you need to understand the domain very well right then only you will be able to extract data out of that then you need to have a strong working knowledge of the tools and the platforms that are available uh, you should be good in sql you should be good in the where suppose you are getting data from youtube you should understand the youtube platform very well twitter you should understand the twitter platform very well open source you should be good in web scraping and all those things you have to be curious because a data engineer job is never complete there are always a better way to do the things and they should have a knack for problem solving because for in a data engineering job there is always problems that happen the different types of data causes the pipeline to break because of that what happens you need to uh, make sure that uh, and have be ready in a fire fighting mode always right cool uh, omkar yeah uh, just give me one minute i will answer let me just talk about all the three quickly and then i will take the questions if you don't mind okay so data analyst is basically the the skills that are required he should have a strong domain expertise understand i'm talking strong because he has to get insights as uh, sayed told right mbas are doing the same thing but Uh, we are using data to talk facts when we present a powerpoint to the business we don't just tell we think from the data we are inferring that this is happening so that is one thing that is important you need to be very uh, you have to have a strong working knowledge of tools because you are the one who is responsible to extract the data from the database that the data engineers have created for you and build analysis over that statistical knowledge is basic right you need to have basic statistical knowledge which hypothesis testing which statistics you need to use to uh, tell that this particular things uh, are really uh, statistically significant and also knack for problem solving is there in all the data skills because data creates problems because of the type and the enormity of the data that is available now the data scientist the one that is predictive and prescriptive analytics which he should be strong in everything okay but one extra thing is that as i told you machine learning he should have a good knowledge of machine learning algorithms and applied machine learning when i mentioned he should be able to apply the machine learning for business use cases very quickly he should not be only good in maths and statistics but also to apply those particular techniques for business how we can use uh, those particular techniques for a better business outcome so now these three things are done now i will ask, try to answer om omkar's question that is on the chat you guys can also put uh, on your chat questions uh, that is there so uh, for non it person what will you suggest which path they should go uh, so for a non uh, it person i always suggest to go with a data analyst path so data analyst path because in this data analyst path you uh, because you you should be at least good in one domain okay if you are a non it person and you are in suppose working in retail you will have some good ex domain expertise that you can also learn so you you can also learn 
the basic working knowledge of tools, right? You can learn Python, SQL, and uh, basic will help you to start your data analyst career. And then you can do statistics and then, so this thing will actually get you, if I show you the path, right? You, you can, uh, if you're not, because you have not been doing coding before. So these things will, uh, okay, one more person has joined. So these things will actually help you, uh, Omkar, to understand uh, and to build up your skills. And when you become a, you are a data analyst, business analyst, you learn those skills and then you can become a lead business analyst and an analytics manager in few years. And that is a good way to start. And when you are comfortable, uh, Omkar, to, uh, in this data analyst, business analyst work that you are doing, then you can also learn and advance as a lead data scientist or a data scientist role as well. But that this is a very good way to start. And to all the non-IT people who have not been coding for in their uh, under graduation, I suggest you to start with a data analyst and a business analyst role. This is a good start. Uh, you can become more confident and you can have the option to move in as a lead data engineer also, as a data engineer also from here and as a data scientist also from here. So that is one path for the non-IT guys. Okay, Omkar, uh, any other questions you guys have? Uh, Rice, you have joined late. You can show me, see the recordings. We are talking about the different data science career options. And if you have any questions, you can also uh, type in uh, later on. So Azhar is typing, I'll just give a minute uh, for him to type in. So uh, you guys, uh, are you guys uh, clear till now? Uh, just a quick uh, yes, no uh, poll. Uh, you guys are clear till now. You are able to understand the things that I am mentioning till now. Let me see what is the uh, question. In IT field. So, uh, Azhar, yeah, I want to have to understand, talk to you one-on-one -on -one and understand what is your specific IT field. But if you are good in uh, coding, right, Python, SQL, you need, you can get, try to become a data engineer or a uh, lead data engineer or an analytics manager. Uh, so for people with, uh, but you mentioned IT field, okay. So we can, so uh, as I told you, Azhar, it will be mostly you can try to get into data analyst and business analyst for uh, non coders uh, or if you are even good in uh, understanding uh, different data platforms we can get into try to get into data engineering because you have mentioned it in field that's why uh, you can uh, talk about that as well so okay so i think people uh, we can talk so this is a very specific case but uh, you can if you have no
Can you hear me? Okay. Is it better now? Sorry for the uh, sorry for the problem. Yeah. Now, can you hear me, guys? Now clearly. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry for the problem. I just uh, rejoined. Sometimes teams have has these issues. Uh, so cool. So uh, uh, these were the skills that is there. So that is required. So as I was telling. Data analyst is a very good way for the people to start as a uh, non coding background, and I suggest all my mentees and students to start with being a good data analyst in the initial period for non IT people who are not so comfortable and confident in coding. OK, and data scientist is the this is the basically a dream job. Everyone thinks who comes into the data field that I want to be a data scientist, right? But you see, there are a lot of different things that are uh, there in uh, data scientist, right? You need to be have a good domain knowledge. You need to be very good in SQL. And to be honest, you have to be, uh, be a very good data analyst to try to uh, traverse into a data scientist field. Uh, many people directly want to jump into data scientist, which is uh, not at all uh, it is not at all a good option because any job that you do initially, you will be working uh, in understanding the data, doing prescriptive and diagnostic. And once you are comfortable in that, you can get into a data scientist role because data science is a journey. You have to start working and you can see, right? You can see there is a lot of overlap in the knowledge between data analyst and data scientist. Data engineers leave it. That is a separate thing for people who are very good in uh, coding and who are very in, uh, good in SQL and uh, for software engineer background. This is a very good field uh, that to build a career on. But data analyst and data scientist, you see there is a lot of overlaps in the, in the skills that are there. So what are you learn in a data analyst? You will be using the, those skills as well in data scientist as well. So that is the few things that are there. So other than these tools and techniques that I told you, okay, there is a lot of other, uh, soft skills that 
needed to be developed for all the three things, right? I am talking uh, uh, for the general things that for, uh, are, but some are more applicable for senior positions. But you need to be uh, very good in uh, requirement gathering. You need to be good in communication. You have to have a good knack of problem solving. You need to have a good uh, uh, presentation because uh, you understand the data that is available and then you need to summarize the data very well and you need to present it. Time management is very important because data, uh, whatever data that you get, you need to present it in a such a way that uh, uh, and in a very short time. Because that is also a very important skill that is required, and you have to be very accurate. So one thing that I have seen in my career that whatever output that you are giving right to the business, you have to have good accuracy. Because if there is an issue in accuracy, accuracy and all those things, your credibility uh, really hits, uh, and it is not a good thing. So now uh, uh, coming to uh, recap. So this is the basic things that uh, we have. In, uh, and uh, this, the major three things in data uh, that I've discussed and uh, for a non IT, they have to really focus on understanding the data and doing data analysis uh, and uh, become a good data analyst because data is uh, one of the main things as I told in the earlier slides, right? You have to have a good understanding of the data the type of data that is available and how we can use that data to do any data analysis. Uh, and now uh, we will go to questions. So this is my basic recap that there are majorly three areas right now. It is categorized data engineering. Data analyst and data scientist and one should focus on one particular path for at least for a few years for two, three years. Become good in that and then think about the next step. OK, so uh, you need to uh, focus on any of these three, build a, get a nice job, try to build good projects and then try to learn few extra things on the site and build your portfolio for the next move or for the next profile. So that is my basic understanding about all the things. One thing remains the same. Hard skills are important, but soft skills also are very important. Uh, so and you have to have a bigger picture in your mind when you are trying to learn about data science. Now I will come to questions. The floor is open for questions. Now uh, I will uh, start uh, before I, uh, I also start taking the questions. Rice is raising his hands. Anything that you want to say, Rice, uh, you can put on the chat. Uh, before I uh, go away from this, and you guys, um, I want to share a few things about the next steps assessment. So. Where are you in data science? How? So first step, you can take a quick assessment about your uh, what is your plan. Uh, so this is a uh, Google form. Uh, these are some questions. If you uh, if you want to understand where you are and what is your next steps, you can take this quick survey that I'm going to put on the chat. So this is one thing. Uh, just copy this survey and uh, this is one thing. And then the next steps is. Uh, be part of this uh, my community that is there. I am trying to give a lot of practical uh, use tips because I have experience of around 17 years in the data science field. And uh, I am uh, why I'm doing this my mission and uh, most of us who have come on to this call are coming through LinkedIn, right? And uh, I have been doing this. One second, the link does not work. Let me just try the link. Just generate the link some. Yeah, the link is working. Uh, OK, so you need to, uh, to copy it into the wait. Hey, guys, you know, it's working. So HTTP, I will just put this. OK. Try this. Please, uh, yeah. 
thank you uh, thank you uh, omkar for confirming yeah so it is working actually and i have also put in two more links uh, about my uh, website and by uh, so the my social media uh, all my uh, properties and all my newsletters and all my things that are here so you guys can uh, also try to follow so my mission is basically to give practical knowledge of all the data science that is available so that you will be able to learn what you require in the job because right now there is a lot of noise everywhere about data right so many things are coming up what are the things that you need to focus on to build your uh, strengths on and how to get a job so first step will for everyone will be to do a good uh, freelancing project or a, a get a job in the data domain so that should be your aim and i really help and give practical bits of knowledge and most of you that are coming to me here are through linkedin right so they have seen what i do i try to give valuable content about practical application of data science and what are the things that are really important uh, now the floor is open to questions uh, this uh, this assessment form is there it would be nice if you guys can fill it take time to fill it uh, uh, write about the type of job you want to do and all uh, and uh, have a look at some of the job pro profiles that are available if i can just show you right uh, this particular link so uh, your linkedin profile and the type of job is important what type of job you want to do try to see job see don't go with titles as someone was mentioning right uh, machine learning engineer data engineer data analyst the title will be there but see the uh, type of job you have, are supposed to do in that that is important because titles are misleading even companies don't know what title uh, is to put they will put data as an analyst and make them do data science work they will put data scientist and they will make them do data engineering work so try to see the description very well try to see what type of job you want to do and try to assess yourself honestly in these main four skills that are there and try to fill this particular form and understand how uh, where you are in this particular journey now the floor is open to questions uh, i am going to take uh, questions uh, from uh, guys let me just uh, uh, first of all uh, go to people uh, and put them uh, allow them participant yeah you can guys can type in your question if anyone wants to talk i can give them the option to uh, allow mic so if anyone wants to talk just raise your hand raise do you have anything your hands is raised so then let me take a question from uh, i think one question there was there from uh, sayed uh, mohammed so one can learn hard skills like sql tableau but how can one learn domain yeah domain yeah so you have to uh, read a lot uh, uh, sayed uh, about domains right you have to read about, uh, a lot uh, like uh, if you are a fresher i think uh, sayed how much experience you have and in which uh, domain you have experience in which industry are you working so you can start with that none so you are a fresher but you but uh, now being a fresher you will have at least good knowledge about online right online space you will have you you will be you can have a good uh, uh, thing about retail because you are doing some online some shopping that you are doing so you can start with these things you can start building and understanding this and try to select a project in a particular domain like suppose you are doing any project about uh, you can say anything it can be twitter it can be uh, any type of data so understand that domain very well and uh spend some good time in giving a good project with a, a good uh, insight and that insight can you can learn that domain online about that particular thing and that is how you build your domain knowledge because in a project people will not understand what not the code that you have written but what is the output that you are generating and how you are helping that domain or the business with some value okay uh now any other questions you guys have uh, i am here uh, you can please type in and if you want to raise your hand raise your hand so that i can give you the mic as well omkar 
Uh, as her. OK, so guys are leaving now. That is OK. Uh, we have five minutes. And then uh, you can talk uh, any other questions. You can get in touch for more details for specific things. Uh, Syed, uh, I want to take questions from others as well. Omkar, you have any questions? Uh, uh, I think uh, 17 was, I think, Jafar, right? Do you have any questions? So, okay, now regarding me, uh, regarding uh, me, uh, as her, uh, if you go to my website that I put on the link, right? I have put a website on the link here, on the chat, the decoding data science. So, here I have, I basically have a course of uh, the one thing that I feel is very important for data science is these six things. One is Excel for data science. BI tool, SQL, statistics, and mathematics, deep dive into Python and machine learning. So these are the basic things you need to be a successful data scientist, at least to start your career. And more focus will be given to, to the type of job you want to do with a project at the end of all these major skills. So data, so as I told you, there are a lot of things in data science according to the assessment that you are feeling and according to your needs, uh, and talking to me one on one, I can suggest what are the things you need to work on. And for if a person wants to do everything, these are the six modules that are there. The details are there. Okay, with uh, with uh, seventy hours of classes are there for all the things. So uh, that are the that is you can get in touch with me on the all the port. I have given the link to on my website and to the, all the social media platforms that is there. So if you want me to give again, I can type it again. And also the assessments that are there. Uh, I will request you to fill the assessment as well. Uh, this is designed after talking to 300 people, right? And what are the main things that are required for these, these uh, in the data science domain? So, OK, Rais has joined again. Rais, you have any questions? Please let me know in data science. Sajjad, you have any questions? Nadeem? So uh, one more thing to the forum that is here. Uh, I have just started uh, this. This is my actually first uh, webinar that I have done uh, with, through myself. I work with a lot of other institutes and a lot of other uh, companies, but this is the first uh, webinar that I'm doing free for everyone who's in my network, right? Because everyone asks me questions and I'm not able to answer everyone. So I have I am trying to do uh, weekly twice webinars uh, like this or master classes like this to talk about general things. So and one technical topic I can uh, take regarding uh, how to start or the introduction or the kickstart sessions for some of the topics that are there. So because uh, this is individually I'm doing it. So please stay uh, follow me on LinkedIn uh, and I will be putting the webinar links there. And mostly I will be doing in teams uh, because I don't want to use any other platform right now. I uh, I want to keep it free for the time being for people who want to uh, know have a general knowledge about these things. Uh, uh, so and uh, there is not so much marketing. That's why there are so not so many people who are joining in, but it is OK. Whoever are joining, uh, I will try to help them and guide them in whatever possible way I can do. And uh, Best of luck uh, for your time and please look forward. Today was the first webinar, so there was some uh, technical issues that were there, but uh, hopefully things will become fine next time. Uh, stay tuned, uh, guys, and thanks a lot for joining in you uh, and uh, spending your uh, uh, one hour in the weekend for me and hope I can help you in your uh, data career journey. And uh, Anything is there, let me know on the chat. Uh, one more thing I can uh, share with you is my email ID. Uh, I'm putting out on the chat. 
if anything is that specific, you can also type in here. It is connect at my uh, company, decodingdatascience.com. Uh, I will just wait. Okay, it is there. Okay, raise. Okay, I think. Uh, just try this link. This is working, right? Omkar confirmed it is working. Yes, David. Uh, David, uh, yes. I what I will do this session is recorded, but I don't. Uh, I will put it on YouTube, uh, and I will share the link. So uh, that is one of the things that I want to really do. Uh, whatever I am trying to share, I am going to record, put it on the platform, so other people who are uh, not able to join because of the uh, time constraints, they can view it. Uh, and also I mentioned David just uh, I know you have come, everyone who has come here has come through LinkedIn. Please try to follow uh, my posts about the next webinar, which I will keep taking weekly twice. That is my commitment to all of the community. One technical and one general uh, about uh, data questions and all those things that people have. OK, so have a great day and uh, take care. Uh, and uh, thanks a lot again for joining and have a great day and uh, bye bye. Ah, thank you, everyone. Rice, yeah, uh, actually, we have uh, gone out of time. We can get, we can uh, join in the next call and we can ask your questions. Uh, and if anything specific, you can uh, email me. Uh, and the job market is, to be honest, it is good. If you can, it is very good. Come, many of my friends uh, want to hire resources, but they're not getting good resources. So that there is a lot of skill gap. There are a lot of jobs in the data. You know that hundreds of jobs are available in Dubai, UAE market in India, in uh, everywhere. In your country as well, but the skills that are required to do that job is. Uh, it is not there, uh, so that is an issue that. Uh, you uh, we need to uh, cater to. That's why I am doing this mission to educate people for their jobs, right? OK, so thank you guys uh, and uh, I'm going to cut off uh, and uh, everyone again have a great day. Bye bye.